Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Bro Seriously Gaming Podcast. It's season two, episode six. Some good math. I man, <laughs> almost fucked it up. <laughs> I do it all the time. So, uh, as you can see, uh, my once again, my name is Evan, and I'm here not with Dustin, but with our buddy Kale. Hi, I'm Kale. <laughs> welcome to the podcast, <laughs> Kale. You know what? That's fantastic. So, Kale. Uh, so, Kale has been on the podcast before. He's actually been in an interview of ours. He's our very first interview. Uh, Kale is a huge uh, part and nucleus to the Bro Seriously world and gaming and the gaming podcast and just the, the entire community. So, Kale, tell us a little bit about who Kale is. Yeah. Um, well, start off. Name's Kale. Actual name's Brett, but even in, even in a movement to get my name tags at work changed to Kale because everybody calls me that. So, 24, don't really stream, but like to. I'm more of a supporter than anything. I kind of. Do a lot of background work on you know podcasts and trying to step into social networking a little bit you know get my get my toes wet there um yeah pretty much it yeah sounds good that's kale bye so, god bye god roll tide roll tide <laughs> so uh today in our episode we're going to be doing a product review uh that is actually going to link up with our interview that kale actually helped set up so we tasked uh kale here with doing um just kind of bringing the podcast alive this week. So he uh, he brought us a interview to do uh, later on that you're going to hear. And then he also brought us Rogue Energy, which is a energy drink that is kind of made for gamers and such. So um, what we're going to do first and foremost is do the, inter- is do, not do the interview. <laughs> we're going to do the product review first, and then we're going to give you the interview. Sound good? Sounds great. Fantastic. So the first part of this is we're going to jump in and read the back label of Rogue Energy. Uh, technically, this is just going to be the about us on the website. So kind of giving you some backstory as to what it is. Uh, you'll understand uh, a little bit more after we're done. So here's it. Here, here it goes. Uh, so Rogue Energy was founded in January of 2017 uh, to be the best gaming drink in the world. Uh, we have developed a premium nootropic stack in the form of a delicious energy and focus drink. It is designed to replace unhealthy canned energy drinks, coffee, and even traditional pre-workouts. Rogue Energy is sugar-free and is loaded with vitamins, antioxidants, and nootropics. I think it's nootropics. N-O-O-T-R-O-P-I-C-S. It sounds healthy, so we'll go with that. Nootropics. Not N-E-W tropics. N-O-O tropics. Nootropics, maybe. Nootropics. I doubt that's it. That doesn't sound right. Phonetically, it just sounds wrong. Call, call it Nootropics. Nootropics. Yeah. And no, no Nootropics. Uh, so we designed Rogue Energy for the emerging professional and competitive gaming market, and it continues to have fantastic carryover and success with students, athletes, entrepreneurs, and anyone looking to optimize their mental and physical performance. Uh, their brand has exploded since exhibiting uh, at TwitchCon 2017 in Long Beach, California, and C2E2 tw- 2018 in Chicago. So uh, if you've listened to the podcast this season, you know that we did a section for G Fuel. Uh, so at first I was like, all right, do we really want to bring on another energy drink? But I thought it was really cool because I think it's a really good comparison. And for you to be able to bring that in, um, me to maybe be the variable in the middle ground, but for you to give your take and experience on it, and I think it's actually kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. So kind of where we'll start off with this, we'll go with the kind of first impressions, sure. sort of. I'm skeptical about that kind of stuff, you know, because like uh, make one of the alien sounds. Yeah. Um, kind of skeptical about that stuff because um, one of the things I just I just don't believe it. Just don't want to try it. Um, so smart words, smart words, smart words, but I'm not so smart, man. All right, forced. <laughs> I'm not a smart man, but I know what rogue is. Touche, sir. Touche. So anyway, first impressions, and I'll I'll kind of start that off. Absolutely. Um, kind of along the lines, I didn't really trust it. You know, I read a lot of reviews and stuff like that about these. You know, mixed drink kind of things. Not not like alcohol, like the Cosmos. These mixed energy drinks, these oh. mixed health drinks, that kind of stuff like gotcha. that. Um, and a lot of like the um, pre-workout stuff and all that. Because if you can't tell, I totally hit that gym up every day. Great flexing. Great flexing. So, you know, I was like, Ugh. I've tried like different, you know, pre-workouts back in the day. And 
used to drink a ton of energy drinks back when I was still a teenager all those years ago. And so I just, I don't know, man, like, I was like, I don't buy it. You don't buy it. But you did buy it, technically. Hang on, hang on we'll get there. But you we'll did buy it. Okay. Well, I just don't buy into that kind of stuff easily. Right. So, first impressions for me, uh, I drank the mango pineapple. So, I drank mango pineapple. We got four, you got first, four flavors. First impressions. Before, I know. Before I know, we try. I know. I'm just saying. Mango pineapple, just everybody knows. So what I drank, uh, so first impressions for me, uh, one thing that I liked, especially when we started looking into the product itself, was that they didn't just look at gamers. Like it was like, oh, there's gamers. But then they really did focus down on entrepreneurs, athletes, students, and any like kind of merging, emerging professionals. And I thought that was a really cool like tagline. And I think that really does bring like a very different feel and vibe to, to, to the energy drink world in essence. Um, I have tried, God, I don't know how many pre-workouts, uh, I've tried so many energy drinks. Um, yeah, I've, I've had a lot of, uh, what, what are we call them? PEDs, performance enhancing drugs, performance enhancing drinks, PEDs. There we go. Performance enhancing drinks. There we go. There we go. There we go. TM. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I've had a lot of different just uh, tastes and things for things like that. So. Uh, to me, first impressions was that I thought it was really cool that they targeted a different type of audience. Uh, so that was that was pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, that was that was one of the things that stood out on the review to me is that they did mm -hmm. poke that. Yeah, absolutely. So, how'd you test it? Well, being a gaming podcast, you would assume I tested it while gaming, but Rocket League had an update. I was out of mobile hotspot data. So I couldn't update it and play it, and everything else I had needed updates. So I used it kind of almost as a replacement for my coffee, in a sense. Um, you know, that's one of the things that kind of stood out. So I'm trying it, right? First one I did was the pink lemonade. I love lemonade. Like, lemony stuff, fantastic. Hard to screw up, you would think. Well, I, I could mess it up. Okay. You ain't never met a man that can mess up box macaroni, could you? My wife. She ever, like, met, she ever messed up Kool-Aid? No, she's never messed up Kool-Aid. Okay. How okay. did you mess up Kool-Aid? Funny story. Oh, no. Yeah. So, if y'all don't know, uh, well, those of you that don't know me personally, I've got all kinds of damn stories, you know. So, story about me messing up the Kool-Aid. So me and my buddy were <laughs> Stop I mean, I just like <laughs> messing up the Kool-Aid. It was like you turn into the water boy. Sorry. I like it. That's nice. Just fit in the water. Just fit in the, fit in the water. <laughs> High quality H2O. So anyway. So me and this dude, Ben, were renting this house from an old lady. And she was like, the house was for sale, but we were renting it at the same time, so we had to like keep it in top shape. So anyway, like hadn't done dishes ever had like half a pitcher of kool-aid sitting on the counter and uh i just took and threw everything in the oven before she got there because nobody ever looks in the oven i've never met anybody to put kool-aid in the oven i was trying to hide it mm. right i don't know why i didn't think to put it in the fridge kool-aid casserole <laughs> there you go so anyway they came showed the house off and stuff like that and then uh she left right by the time my roommate gets home her housemate Roommate. Roommate, yeah. So he gets in, and, you know, he's going to cook and pizza. So he goes in there, turns the oven on. Next thing you know, the house just smells horrible. And opens it up, and there's just a milk, a melted, giant-ass pitcher that used to be Kool-Aid. Melted all in the oven. It took about a week and a half of scraping to get it all out. That's just upsetting. Like, you know, I'm not proud of myself. But it made for a damn good story later. It did, it did. I mean, I've never met anybody that bought, that had baked Kool-Aid before. So if you ever want to know, don't bake Kool-Aid. Don't bake, bake Kool-Aid. Don't bake Kool yeah. So I don't even know where you got onto that. So, oh, we talked about messing up pink lemonade or lemonade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, so you can mess up Kool-Aid. Hopefully you can't mess up pink lemonade. Maybe not, but I'm sure I will find out. Sure. So, so anyway, kind of back to subject at hand the rogue so first one i tried was the pink lemonade and i was expecting it to be like a 
like a NOS or something, an energy drink. Right. You know? But I drank it and stuff like that, and, like, I didn't get super wound up. Like, most of the time, if I drink an energy drink, I'm bouncing off the walls. I'm crazy, and I, I, I'm scatterbrained. Right. Like, worse than normal. Okay. But it was really weird, because when I drank Rogue, like, I didn't get that really high energy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was very gradual up to a point. But I do have to say, like, my focus on what I was doing was on point. Like, I was, um, I drank a little bit before I went to work because I don't necessarily tend to work the best. Um, some people probably tell you. Um, but I kind of took it, and it really helped me focus on the task at hand I had. It helped me, uh, helped me stay focused with my customers and stuff like that because I work retail. And, um, Help me with that. Then I took it the next day um, when I was doing work around the house, you know, getting stuff done. Like, I actually got, like, my weed killer sprayed. I got the bug killer sprayed. Like, normally, I would just cut half my yard and say, fuck it, I'm going to play games in the air conditioner. So, yeah, like, I was I was legitimately impressed. I didn't have any crashes, any divots in, like, my focus or my energy. So, that was really neat. And so you tried the berry pomegranate, the pink lemonade, and blue raspberry. Yes. So what was your favorite one? Pink lemonade. Pink lemonade. Okay, so how was the blue raspberry? Blue raspberry was not bad. Not as good as the pink lemonade, but not bad. And the berry pomegranate. Tastes like ass. 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 Yeah. So if you eat ass, berry pomegranate is for you. Just a disclaimer. <laughs> so, uh, so I got the luxury of drinking mango pineapple like we talked about. And... Uh, I, oddly enough, so I drank the mango peach G Fuel, and I'm not even a mango fan. Like, I don't really like mango. Like, I don't think it particularly tastes very good, but when it's mixed with other things, I tend to enjoy it. Like, I won't just eat a mango. It just, it's nothing that I truly enjoy. But when it comes to these drinks, mango peach was probably my favorite one, and mango pineapple was really, really good. Uh, I actually took it earlier today uh, as we prep for the podcast or other things, and I always go back to. The Holy Grail is Adderall, right? Like, right here. Sorry, I need to bring that in the frame. Holy Grail is Adderall. So I always use that as, like, that's God-level intensity and focus. Uh, so that's where I kind of put the, the scale and the measure. Um, I think that uh, G Fuel got me more hyped. So if I'm looking like, if I'm going to go on a fucking rager, I'm going to drink G Fuel. And if I'm, like, really needing to, like, get, like, super amped and, like, super, like, just... Kind of, it's all, yeah, it's almost like when you get, you get to like take a few shots before you feel loose. That's kind of like G Fuel. Like it's kind of like fun. Uh, whereas this was a much more, kind of like you said, it had a rise and then it just leveled at a really nice place and I felt focused. Uh, I felt kind of like I'd locked in a little bit. I kind of got in the zone with what we were doing and then it, it really helped on that end for me for sure. So I, I mean, I really like that side of it. I think that was really neat. And it didn't give me that crazy hype feel. And then I haven't had any crash either. So it's been pretty leveled out. I haven't felt bottomed out. And I, and once again, I like that I played a few games of Rocket League. Um, I could tell that I was I was locked in. I don't know that my gameplay was necessarily like it was a warm-up game or two or three. So I wasn't like killing it, knocking it out of the park. But no, I mean, I was I was pulling off some kind of decent moves and stuff. Nothing that would wow me, but I think ultimately, like, it was my focus in the game that, that was really noticeable. Uh, because I, I think one thing that we sometimes think about when we think about G Fuel or Rogue or anything like that is, like, it's going to improve your gameplay. It's going to make you, like, from a fucking scrub to, like, high god levels type shit. And, like, that's a little bit unfair uh, as to more. So, for me, it was, like, the focus that I had, and I was, like, really... You know, sometimes like you get in a game, like you get in a, you get in this like place where you play for a while, and like you just kind of go autopilot mode. Like yeah. this was like I never went autopilot. Like I stayed in in line. I knew exactly what I was doing and why I was doing. It. Don't play Rocket League autopilot mode. Yeah, well, you know, um, you win some, you lose some. Let's see, man. All the cement in those tires. Yeah. So, so kind of going along with this, how would how would you position this to somebody that's not a gamer? Somebody that's not a gamer. Okay, so if I were, so here, here is a section for sales pitches. So, will you you feel comfortable pitching? 
I feel comfortable giving an idea. Okay, okay. You know my so, sales pitch so, is rough. So we'll do a sales pitch. So, <clears throat> let me fix the time. So, if it were me, and I were walking college campuses around the United States, I'd be targeting college students. So, not everybody can get their hands on Adderall, kids. Not everybody can do it legally or illegally. So, what if I told you that I had a alternative that would give you almost the exact same experience without any of the side effects and it was completely legal. What if I told you that you could stay focused, study for that test, you could stay focused and finish that project? What if I told you that you could pull an all-nighter and all you had to do was drink 16 ounces of rogue energy? How do you feel about that? What do you, what do you got? Right. I almost want to hand you some money. Give me some damn rogue <laughs> oh, energy. Okay, yeah. Like, fuck. Yeah. So, so, hold on, hold on. I got you. I got you. <clears throat> there we go. All right. So, what about your pitch? So, when I was doing my homework for this, right? I didn't necessarily work it as a pitch. I worked okay. it more, more of a commercial kind of okay, thing. Okay. Absolutely. So, actually, I had two. Two, two commercials. Yeah. I'm Overachiever. At, I'm actually going to have, uh, have our editor make one of these for me okay so if y'all watch the video version the podcast y'all get which you should you should you should watch you should watch and listen honestly. yes both i i personally do both. so it's the first one holy shit okay yeah. well somebody is going for extra credit on the podcast yeah yeah like that's what i was telling everybody i was like dude if like i win like the vote on twitter one time i beat you at something you need to stop fucking pandering yeah so first one First one's going to start off kind of a your stereotypical commercial clip. So you're going to have the beginning of four individuals' mornings. Okay. You're going to have the athlete. Mm -hmm. You're going to have the professional streamer. Okay. You're going to have the stay-at-home parent. Okay. And you're going to have the businessman. Okay. So with each of them, they're all going to their cabinet to do their get their adult drugs. You know, get their their coffee. Their adult drugs. <laughs> Sorry, I had something in mind. But I forgot it. Like just kidding. so. Oh, good. So they're going to the cabinet to get their coffee. So they open their uh, cabinet, or they're going to pop a cake up in their Keurig. When they open it up, they see a bottle of Rogue sitting there. Okay. So they all get up, put it in their mixer, shake it up. A lot faster, you know, if you're in a hurry than making a pot of coffee. True. Shake it up, they drink it, they go about their business. So the athlete's going to the gym. He goes in there, he get, he focused, he's in the zone, he gets that extra set of reps in. You know, the streamer, they're all hopped up for their stream, they're focused, they're ready to, you know, go platinum in diamond diamond yeah ready to go diamond in rocket league then you or have them yep yeah, either i'd say platinum um then you got this stay at home parent struggle taking care of kids but they had uh the focus the energy and the attention span to get everything done for the brats came back home and fucked up everything because you know how children are and then the last one was the family friendly podcast yeah absolutely yeah we love you kids Anyway, so the last one is the businessman. Mm -hmm. So he drinks it. He's going over all of his numbers. He's got his shit down. He goes into a meeting, closes a big deal, and then it comes out at the end. Rogue Energy capitalize on your day. Mm. I see. I see. Long and drawn out, but hey, no. in, a, in a commercial, it's great. Now, my last one. Okay. Super quick, super simple. Okay. So you're going to have the Folgers theme plan. That bottle waking up. Is waking up with rogue energy in your cup. Does it start playing like crazy metal music? <laughs> what an yeah. Like 80s, like hair metal? Yeah, at the end, it's gonna have explosions and everything. That makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. The best part of waking up rogue is energy. In your cup. Mm. So, for those of you just listening at home, I had to move the camera back onto both of us. I had to spotlight Kale during his uh, pitch. Careful so, I do. No. Beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. So, so here at, at this point, so, uh, well, let's do this. So, if you like Kale's commercials, make sure you do, uh, let's see. I want to do like Rogue Kale, Rogue Crunchy, or would it yeah. be just Bass Backwards? No, that's fun. Let's do hashtag Rogue Kale or hashtag Rogue Crunchy. Uh, don't forget this pandering son of a bitch. I'm begging for votes. Don't just do it because of that. 
Let him win because it's real. Yeah, that too. Let him win because it's real. Fuck, is that what, that... what? Is that being a bitch and asking for votes right then? No, of course not. Oh, Dan, cut that out. Keep it in. By the way, so now we go to the would you recommend stage. So there are four different categories that we're going to hit on. Uh, well, actually, it's three and then a, an overall score. So do you want to go first on this one? Uh, sure, I'll go okay. first. So uh, taste. How, what would you give it in taste out of five bros? <clears throat> taste is going to be kind of hard because I didn't try the, the mango pineapple. But sure. I'm assuming it was really good. Yeah, it was good. The other two flavors I had were fantastic. But you really have to have a special taste for the pomegranate. Okay. I don't like pomegranate, I guess. So that should have been probably rock one. Um, well, well, so let's like overall, maybe like, a, like an over. Yeah, an overall, overall score. I would say it probably got a four. Okay. Four out of five. Four to five bros. Okay. All right. So ease of use. How was it, easy, how was it to prepare? Easily a five. Five. Like just Perfect. 16 ounces of water. Dump it in. Shake it. Good to go. Sweet. Effectiveness. This is the big one. I would have to give it probably. Like, I'm so t like a four and a half. Okay. Can I do that? Sure. Give half point. Four and a half, bros. So why four and a half? Just because, like, I th I feel like it should probably be called a focus drink instead of an energy drink because I wasn't just brimming with energy like you think with an energy drink. Right. But everything else it talks about was dead on. Like I was spot on with my focus, my attention, everything like that. So for all of that, does exactly what it says. Just wasn't what I was expecting out of the energy part. Right, right, makes sense. And then, so if you had to give it an overall score, overall, I'd probably go with a four and a half. Four and a half bros. I don't know. We need like some some triumphant horns or something. Like that. The Final Fantasy level up sound. Was that the end of a fight? Okay, so uh, we've got, so for me, so taste. Taste, given the small sample size uh, and the mango pineapple, I give it a four out of five bros. I, I think uh, taste-wise is what you can come to a, to expect. It's nothing that like blew me away. It's nothing that I was like, oh my God, this is the greatest energy drink I've ever tasted or anything like that. I mean, I think it's kind of on... It's on par with G Fuel, and I'm going to use those comparatively because that's what we've we've talked about on here. Uh, I think G Fuel sometimes did have a, uh, I don't know, like a more watered down taste. Maybe I, I'm, it, it just they're they're close. They're close. Uh, ease of use super easy. Five out of five. You know, I think it was super easy to um, make 16 ounces of water, dump it in, shake it up, boom, you're done. Uh, effectiveness. I would say this is like a three and a half for me. So I think once again, energy wasn't like boom, like crazy. Once again, I, I go five would be Adderall. So I'm using that once again, you know, and bring this in barometer five stars is Adderall. Um, I give it three and a half, which I think is, is pretty fair. Honestly, I think it's, it definitely helped with focus. Uh, it definitely helped in like my prep for this. It definitely helped in some rocket league play. I don't think that like I felt you know, otherworldly, but once again, you're not really supposed to. I don't think it like fixed my gameplay, uh, but I think it was overall a pretty good feel and it didn't overly hype me. I, I'm going to move it to a four. Let's move it to a four because I think it's more fair. Um, you know, the only thing that could really take it on to the next level is probably bringing up even just the energy level a little bit higher and then matching the focus with those so they're on par together. And then I think they would it'd be a five out of five, but I would definitely get a four out of five with an overall score of four. Uh, I think, um, that would be probably the most um, the most well one of the more well rounded because I think G Fuel uh, pretty close. They both just do very separate things. Once again, one was a hype drink and one was a focus drink. So depending upon what you're trying to achieve, I think that's what really separated the two for me. Did you drink both of them at the same time? Would you just combust? I think you'd become a super saiyan. So we might need to try that. So and find two very like flavors, two flavors that will mix. Make like a gallon jug of it. So, and go to town. So, but yeah. So, yeah, that's our, uh, that's our uh, Rogue Energy product review. So, I gave it a four out of five bros, where Mr. Kale here gave it a four and a half out of five bros. 
So uh, we will drop a link in the uh, in the video and on the podcast notes so that you guys can check it out if you are interested in doing so. And then you'll actually be able to give um, get a discount code uh, because you'll see the podcast. You'll be able to get a discount code through our next uh, interview that we're going to do. So would you want to interview the uh, interview we're doing? Yeah. So the interview or interviewee we're going to have mm-hmm. is um, a streamer that we saw one of our buddies um, hosting one day and we kind of gave him a hard time about it to start with but then um, kind of hopped in her stream started talking to her fantastic streamer keeps up with her chat and stuff all that she's grown to be one of my more favorite streamers um, does a lot of variety of games and stuff like that but um, she is known as Cricky or Cricket depending on how well you know her I guess um, super fun a lot Look at really looking forward to this interview. Sweet. So this is going to be our interview with Cricky. All right, guys. So this is our special interview with uh, a featured streamer and content creator. Uh, so please clarify this for me because you probably know this better than anyone. So is it Cricket or is it Cricky? Because obviously on Twitch it's Cricky, but I've already heard you say Cricket once. Yeah. So um, the original intent was Cricket. Uh, that started when I was about eight years old but we had to have numbers at the end of it and that's just not very marketable and it's hard to tell people like verbally like yeah it's this with all these numbers and they're like <laughs> i'm not gonna remember that and you're like well yeah, yeah. you're not so i was looking and cricket wasn't available which it actually should become available eventually uh because the person who has it is completely inactive and does nothing and hey. doesn't follow anyone who's active so they can't be using it um, but Cricky was available and my viewers already called me, you know, Cricket, Crickers, Cricky. So we just, we went with it. Hey, like, I mean, it could it be a lot beautiful. worse. I mean, it could be a lot worse, honestly. Right. So yeah, ex- yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so we're going to go, what, what do you prefer? Let's go with that. What do you prefer? Oh, I'm super not picky. Some people call super me Crikey. Crikey. You know, I, 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 I thought about that as I was thinking about stuff today, I was like, in the car driving, I was like, it looks a lot like crikey, like, you know, like slang. So, yeah, you know. I have a lot of Australian friends, and one of them was like, no, 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 crikey spelled with just a K. Yeah. But then another one was like, no, it can be either. Another one was like, no, it is CK. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got in the <laughs> middle of like a, you got in the middle of like an Australian like turf war. So, you know, you yeah, had to, basically. <laughs> yeah, you had to figure out what side you want to be on. So, uh, that makes perfect sense. You know, that's a good way to start it. So uh, for those that don't know you, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, kind of what's your, how long have you been streaming, that kind of thing? Um, I started streaming June of last year. So I've been streaming a little over a year, not crazy long or anything. Uh, my streams primarily consist of uh, just like variety of different games, just depending on what's um, what's good at the moment, what's new, what's... Um, what everyone wants to see, you know, if someone donates something, I'll do that. Uh, and then I also, I try to do it about once a week, but lately it's been like once every other week, I do uh, special effects or cosplay makeup. Oh, cool. Uh, which all those pictures I post to like the Instagram and Twitter and it's really fun. I'm making a note um, to make sure I come back around to some of that. So I don't know if you've ever listened to the podcast before. And in some ways, I hope that you haven't. Um, just because I don't know that you know what's coming next. So that makes it so much better if you haven't. Uh, I was sent one, and I watched, like, tiny bits and pieces, but, like, I have no idea what's perfect. going on. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay, cool. This isn't comforting. <laughs> so uh, in, our, in our interviews, we always have the first part of the interview is what we call the gauntlet. So it's ten random questions to kind of help our chemistry a little bit to make sure that we can kind of – Uh, Get your brain rolling a little bit so we can kind of get on the same page and just ask you some either really stupid and crazy, like, random (laughs) questions. Uh, Nothing that we have right now is super fucked up, so you don't have to worry about that. Like, it's something super crazy. Uh, But, you know, like, there's never really telling where it's going to go either. So, uh, are you ready? Uh, Yeah, definitely. Are you sure? (laughs) you Uh, sure? Definitely, maybe. Definitely, maybe. It's a really good movie. It's a good movie. I love Ryan Reynolds, though, so. Who doesn't? That's very true. And he's Canadian. He's Canadian, so. And he's Canadian. Yeah, is that is that like bonus points? Yeah. Why is that? Bonus Didn't you listen to the podcast for last? I don't know. Did I? Like, I, I mean, I don't know. Did you? 
I, I did Ryan it. Reynolds. I know I did it. So I did. I, 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 uh, sure. Yeah. I, maybe. Maybe. Cool. So let's get into question number one. So question number one is this: uh, What album would be the soundtrack of your life if you could only listen to one album from now on for the rest of your life? So what would your soundtrack to your life be? Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. I don't know that I've listened to Volume. I haven't seen Volume Two. I've seen Volume. I've seen the first one. It's very good. Is it? Yes. Like I even own it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like a little upset. Are you? I literally have it. It's sitting right over there. Like I own it, and I still haven't seen it. Remember when you asked me if I ever seen what was it? Whiplash. Yeah. I don't. Wait till you watch Whiplash to even give me that comparison. So either way, sorry. Uh, so all right. So Kale. All right. Question number two: Would you rather be the funniest person in the room or the most intelligent? The funniest. The funniest? So why would you say the funniest? Because if you're the funniest, everyone likes you, and you can just be stupid, and you're pretty unaware of if you look stupid. But if you're the most intelligent, you're aware of how stupid everyone else is, and how much you hate everyone, and no one likes you. That's a really good explanation. Yeah, that... that... Damn. Because at, at, <laughs> at first I would have said the most intelligent person in the room. Now I'm really starting to think, rethink my uh, position on that. Eh. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you this first. Do you have any tattoos? Yes. Okay. So may, hopefully this does not throw a wrench in this. So if you had to get a tattoo of any anime character, what tattoo would that be and what would they be doing or what would it be of? Um, okay, so anime, are we limiting that to like animated television shows or would that include like studio ghibli like hayao miyazaki kind of stuff i think all is included okay that'd be fun yep okay then i would definitely get like a half sleeve like montage of different studio ghibli characters faces along with some of like the um like the musical scoring written out like piano scoring do you know what she's talking about? Because that is beyond my expertise. In yeah. Anyway. And... Okay, good. Good. I'm glad. Like, like, if you see my face, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. So, like... yeah. That's yeah. right. That's the reason it was that. Spirited Away was one of those movies, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, she kind of touched on this in her stream a little bit the other day, but I didn't, didn't stop her from making a question because we needed another question. Oh. But, um, <laughs> and I didn't catch the whole story, so I wanted to okay. hear it. But, um, there's uh, some significant meaning to some of those uh notes am i not am i correct yes yes um the main theme to the movie spirited away is actually the song that i walked down the aisle to at my wedding oh that's really cool yeah. so so uh, now i have to look that up so i can have some context then yes it's very pretty okay so what is it the context of the song that made you choose that or is that like just because it's really pretty both okay um, the context for the song, it's played multiple times in the movie, but it's always during a part of the movie where there's, like, significant, like, growth in the character. And so, continually having, like, healthy, significant growth in your, like, marriage or in your relationships with people is also really important. That's really cool. Interesting. So, now I have something new to watch. So, there we yeah, go. Definitely. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and Spirit Away. Cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and man, knock. I'm just making you a list. <laughs> like I have now created a list of new things to watch. So man, about time somebody else got a list. I got a list of currently sitting at 63 movies. I believe it. Like you he, and he has to watch three. He hadn't seen Anchorman before we started talking to you him. You've never seen Anchorman. I've seen it at this point. He's like, seen it now, but it took like that movie's been out for like 10 plus ever. years. Like it's been out forever. It's like a staple in like movies that you have to watch by the time you're like 12. Like. Yeah. Either way, either way. I watched it when I was 23, yeah. so it's okay. When you were 20? <laughs> we did double the time in which to watch it. That makes perfect sense. All right. Kale, you're a nerd. All right. So, question number four. If you could have one game turned into a movie, what game would that be? Um, that's a good one. Probably Borderlands 2. 
I'm not laughing at your answer. I'm laughing because Kale looked at me. He's like, yeah, I thought of that question, motherfucker. Like, I told you it was good. I told you it was good. I'm like, yeah, it's good. It's a fucking fantastic question, Kale. Thank you. High five. That's all I've ever wanted. Feels good. There we go. Feels good, man. So, so Borderlands 2. So is there any reason, like, so would you continue the animation style and just actually give it a storyline or would you make it live action? Um. Here's, here's the real questions possible to keep the animation style that would be preferred but i think a live action would still be pretty funny yeah. what about regardless just, since we're talking about that why not mix them because you've seen like the bad moxie cosplayers and stuff yeah. where they yeah, do all they, that like, crazy if you do makeup the appropriate makeup you could still kind of keep the style so what are the cool. what are the things called in there like the, the radic not radicals what are they called the like the bad guys like they're, they're called something specific right i haven't played in a minute it's been Ricky, a minute since i played, played borderlands it's been a <laughs> They're, uh, I can literally see them in my head. I can too. I just can't think of which the names. ones. Well, there's a bunch of different ones because there's like, depending on the rank, like there's like badasses, which are. I'm thinking like the low the end guys, like the not oh. the midgets. Not no, not the midgets. The no, midgets I, I didn't. I didn't mean like low end, like they're lowest to the ground. I meant like <laughs> Evan. That's what I mean. low end is like easiest um, to kill. It's like the little skinny dudes, like that run around like sharks oh, half the time. Yeah, oh, and God. they have the like gas mask face. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the fuck the. I, I mean, like you could tell me anything, and I'd probably tell you right. So. I want to say psycho, but that's the character. Psychos, play. psychos. I think that. Wait, no, no there psychos. are psychos. There are psychos. Yeah. yeah, tell me psychos. Well, there are psychos. Uh, we're gonna go with psychos. Like I think that would actually kind of translate really cool to live action, though. I think it'd be kind of a really interesting idea. And I know a lot of people that could play them. That's. There's that too. <laughs> yep. Psychos. We're going a little deep on this one. All right, cool. So, uh, uh, so next question: If you could have any weapon from any movie or video game to use in the zombie apocalypse, what weapon would you choose? I got dollar two cents. Do I just get the <laughs> the machete? Is so good. Um, do I just get the weapon, or do I get like the character's abilities to wield just that the, weapon? Well, wow. okay, so. We'll say you don't necessarily get the skill set, but you get the weapon and any special abilities it may yield. So you don't honestly become like some badass with a katana, but if the katana shoots fire, you can still shoot fire, but you won't be a badass with it. Oh, You'll just have a really everything. have a really badass weapon. Um, now I have no idea. Because <laughs> I had an answer before you said that I wasn't going to be badass, and now I'm like, well, you okay. might be badass with it. We so, so what if you were up. a badass with it? So, so if you could translate over, do you have a specific weapon in mind? Yeah, I would. Okay. I would have Kirito's swords from Sword Art Online and dual wield, and it'd be dope. Would you have the the broken skill cap? Would you be a beater? Probably. Once again, we're going beyond my skill set. But that's okay. Like, fuck it. Like, it sounds cool. So what makes this sword and ability so special? Um, so based in the show, it's a one-of-a-kind skill, and he's the only character in the entire game to have it. Okay. Um, so instead of needing, like, a shield and a sword, you have two swords, and you can just, like, push harder and faster and slice through more, and it's just insane. So it's kind of like the ultimate DPS weapon. Yeah. Like, no need for tanks. No need for anything else. You just just go to yeah, town. Yeah, you just go. Gotcha. Makes sense. Okay. All right. So we'll take that and we'll kind of move along to question number six. Yeah. So if you were a WWE wrestler, <laughs> what would be the name of your signature finisher? Oh, the muff toss. I don't eat. <laughs> Please explain this move. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, a while back, I was playing one of the Resident Evil games, and one of the characters, you could do that thing that, like, Black Widow does, where she, like, jumps, and you, like, wrap your legs around someone's head, and then you swing yourself around, and then you, like, flip them over. A Hurricane Rana. And I was like, it's a muff toss. A muff so, toss. Hmm. That's what we called it, all stream. I just want to say, That's she didn't miss a fucking it. beat on that one. No, like, it was, <laughs> that was there. It was the muff toss. She's thought about that one a lot. The muff toss no, and I... the hurricane run of muff toss. 
Makes perfect sense. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll take it. It makes perfect sense. I'm gonna download uh 2K17 wrestling. <laughs> I wanna make that move. <laughs> <laughs> By God, it's the muff toss! By God <laughs> There we go. It makes perfect sense. Oh no. Alright. So the man bun. Yes or no? Are you Chris Hemsworth? No. Then no. Okay. Good I can live with that. I can I live can with do. that, honestly. Makes sense. He's Thor. Or or Jason Momoa. Mm, I can, he can also have a man. E either of those are good. Like, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> he has a crush. Yeah, like I heard him like <laughs> lustfully say, mm, mm, Definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, there's nothing wrong with appreciating... Beauty on either side. Uh, hey, look, I've already devoured in my love to Ryan Reynolds, John Krasinski, uh, Brad Pitt, uh, apparently Jake Gyllenhaal at this point, too. Like, I've, I've got, like, a long <laughs> list of, of men that I have. I apparently have a type, too. Like, I think they're all pretty much the same type person, so. Pretty close. I got a type. Uh, makes sense. Yeah, cool. <laughs> this is a super serious question. <laughs> yeah. So, so, going from there, how would you solve world hunger? This is like a Miss America pageant question. <laughs> Might be a Miss Bruce Seriously pageant is this question. Like, is this like a you want me to think about it or like you want me to just give my first... My first like the show? first thing that comes to mind, like how do you solve it? Oh, I would just remove all the warning labels off of shit. Let it solve itself. There you go. Like, so like... So one step above mass so genocide. Like, don't drink bleach. Like, just take that off. What happened? Yeah, you know, like we're already eating People Tide Pods. We already eat Tide Pods. I was going to say, we already eat Tide Pods. <laughs> so you know what? It's... It's already fair game as it is. Makes perfect sense. I get behind that. Okay. Uh, so if you could go back in time and live in any era, where would what would you or what era would you live in? And we can also take location into effect as well. So if you want to like travel some other place. Um I would It's a tie between like the like 20s and maybe like the 60s any, too far back any anything in particular as to why um for the 20s i'm a really big fan of like old big band music and like frank sinatra fred astaire gene kelly all of them so and i just like the fashion style from that era like the style is just it's very fun Mm -hmm. And then for the 60s, that's when all the good rock and roll starts coming out. Very true. That's like, that's Elvis, right? Like right in the 60s? Mm -hmm. 50, 50, 60s, I think, or Elvis. 50, um, 60s, um, 60s, 70s, you start getting, you know, like Beatles, Rolling Stones. Doors and stuff like that. Stuff. Okay, that makes perfect sense. One more question on the gauntlet. Oh, gosh. All right, now this. Also, my ears are fuzzy. <laughs> How much have you had to drink? <laughs> Not, not enough. enough. All right, but Bingo. kind of on a kind of on a more serious note, the last question is mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. even more serious than yeah. ending world hunger. Yeah. So tricky. Yes. Are you more of an ass man or a boob guy? <laughs> hmm. Golly. You know, every time someone asks me this, I change my answer. I mean, sometimes you gotta switch it. <laughs> I mean, asses are nice, tits are nice. Probably ass. I probably lean more to ass. Makes perfect sense. Good answer. So welcome, welcome to being uh, complete <laughs> through the gauntlet. So now we've now that we've gotten all of that. Uh, in, fantastic information locked into the into the bank um so i, I think it was i think uh it was kind of interesting because we were talking beforehand when we were writing out the questions we we're gonna do all these different things um it, you know you're off, you're the first female streamer that we've had on the show uh and that we've had on here so congratulations on that first and foremost uh but i thought it would be uh it'd be kind of interesting for us to kind of dive into female streamers for one because i think it's probably a very different landscape than it is for us guys uh to say the least um, so, and then of course the ass man or boob guy question obviously is a, is a fantastic lead way into that. So, um, 
So in in your mind, what is it like being a female streamer? I mean, and I guess you could comparatively say what you think the difference is between male and female streamers. Um, or at least from your, maybe I should say from your perspective. From my perspective and experience, I think that for male streamers, while there is some like, there are some people who will like show up to the stream and like subjectify them and be like, oh, you're so hot, uh, take your shirt off, like stupid crap like that. Like with like cat calls towards guys are usually a lot less um, aggressive right then cat calls towards girls right um and not only cat calls but like any um any kind of unwanted uh statements like to you as a person or as a gender right um, you know someone might come and be like you know oh you're ugly why are you why are you streaming but i feel like the things that people will say towards women they're a lot more um pinpointed Right. Like, they're a lot more thought out. They're yes. less generic and they're more specific to that person who is streaming. Just in the experience that I've had with that kind of stuff. So how, so how do you, um, I guess in, in a sense, uh, how do you deal with, I don't know that trolls is the right word for that, because I feel like trolls is, is almost a little too, I don't want to say nice, because I don't, I, mean, I, I feel like... It's a, it's a little too kind to say, but what do you do with like people that are dicks like that? I mean, <laughs> they come in and decide that that's the way that they want to approach it, and that's the way that they want to approach a female streamer. Yeah, so it depends on how severe they want to get. Like, I don't know how much I can like say. It's I mean, we can like we can just like leave names out, but beyond that, like we pretty much say yeah. everything. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you know, someone comes in, they say something really, you know, like weirdly sexual and really stupid like like i had someone come in like two months ago and they were like trying to make an anal joke and they were like oh does your butthole hurt and i was like and you know my options are freak out on them right. ignore them or troll back right <laughs> well i don't want to freak out on them and if i ignore them my chat will be like are you reading this <laughs> so my options is troll back and so i go yep i just took me a big old poop <laughs> <laughs> he was like what is wrong with you? And I was like, I don't know what's wrong with you. You're the one coming and asking. Right? About, you're the one coming and asking about buttholes. So you know it's a little yeah, strange. Yeah. So, so with the less severe ones, it's like I usually just troll back at it and I just call it good. With the really, really bad ones, however, um, typically I won't say anything to them, and that'll result in me or a moderator just immediately banning them without any kind of, um warning or like second chance like when i was moving yeah when i was moving i was packing and i was doing this live stream packing uh just hanging out with everyone because i'd been really busy and i hadn't gotten to stream i was like oh this is an opportunity to just like sit and catch up with everyone do an irl and someone came into the stream and they were like so do you wear all that makeup on your face because in actuality your face looks like a failed coat hanger abortion Jeez. Yeah. And I was like, bye bye. Yeah. Like, you know? and so, like, and that, and that's what I meant, like, by they're a lot more like pinpointed. Like, they're specifically picking on something that, like, women can be really um, uncomfortable with or really right. hurt by. You know, um, things about like makeup and weight and hair and all kinds of. So, um, so many. <laughs> there's just a lot of dicks apparently out there because yeah. and I, I guess i could say from from a male streamer perspective like i don't deal with that a whole lot like i mean like for the most part like people come in people hang out like that's really the extent of, i've only had a handful of trolls and oddly enough like some of them turned into followers and viewers and even regulars yeah. strangely enough you know like that kind of thing but uh i think you're right i mean just just from kind of what you hear from either Twitch or Twitter or you know other female streamers, that's kind of the norm, and it's kind of it's kind of crazy, and it's kind of sad that it's to that point because it's in some way, shape, or form, obviously, like you're there. I don't want to say there to do a job, but you're there just trying to entertain folks. Uh, you're there just trying to you know have fun and you know do your thing. And obviously, when somebody takes it into that context, that kind of thing, it really sucks. Yeah, and it's definitely something that 
deters a lot of women from continuing to do it, even if they love streaming. Like, even if they love playing games or doing, you know, IRLs or whatever, um, if someone comes in and says that kind of stuff and they're not, you know, mentally prepared for that to happen, it completely deters them from wanting to ever do it again and they just drop it. So, yeah. That sucks. So... What made you want to become a streamer in the first place? I mean, like, was there a specific game or something that came out? Or was it, like, a specific streamer that you, like, watched? You're like, oh, okay, like, that's really cool. Like, I like that idea. Or... Um, so, that's a story. <laughs> so, I actually was originally in school for veterinary medicine. Um, I was in my fourth year of pre-vet, uh, working on studying for my test to get into veterinary school. Um, I was, you know, I'd been married for about a year at that point, And it kind of occurred to me, like, if we ever decide to start a family, someone's got to stay home. Because I don't trust like a nanny <laughs> to like raise a child. Like I just, I'm a lot of people do that. Like a lot of people have like daycares and nannies and stuff. I'm just not about that. Right. Like I was raised at home by my mom. And that's what I want to be if I have a kid. So I was like, Oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? Because I, you know, uh, my husband's in the Air Force, and he uh, is in school for engineering, and, like, he's not going to stay home. <laughs> so I was like, uh, I can't stay home as a vet. So I started thinking, you know, what could I do instead? So I kept pursuing that career um, up until the point that I discovered how much I loved streaming and deciding to pursue that. And what happened was I was talking to my friend, uh, who's actually one of my moderators in the stream, Little Rock, mm -hmm. about it, and he was like, have you ever thought about streaming? And I was like, what is that? I don't know what that is. He's like, do you know what Twitch is? And I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, I have no idea what that means. And he was like, oh, you like live stream like games and stuff. And you like talk to people. I just, I don't know. I think you have the personality for it. And I think you'd like it. You play games every night as it is with all of us. Like, why not live stream it? And I was like, that could be cool. So I like started looking into it a little bit more. And I had never streamer i had no idea what twitch streamers even like did or what i needed to do that but i did a bunch of research i got everything i needed and i started uh streaming about two weeks after that conversation and just like fell in love with it yeah and so talked to mr cricket about it and i was like what do you think about me like trying to make a career out of this and like pursuing this because i really <laughs> love it and i really enjoy it and he was like go for it and i was like <laughs> <laughs> love how supportive oh, yeah. you are. Yeah. So, kind of along those lines, what what struggles do you face as a streamer? As a streamer or as a female streamer, like yes. just in general? Like, do you feel yes. like do you feel like they're separate? Yes. Okay, so let's go. Um, let's go general, and then let's go female. Okay, so as a as a general struggle as a streamer, um, especially when you're first getting started it's really easy to look at your numbers, look at how many people are currently in your stream or active in your chat and let that determine your mood throughout your stream. But that's terrible and that's gonna get you <laughs> nowhere. Uh, so something I learned really fast when I started streaming was make it where you can't see how many people are in your chat. Just take that out of the picture, don't have that pulled up and continue to act the way you would act if you had a hundred people in the room who just were simply not talking right. because that does happen. A lot of big streamers, they have, you know, hundreds of people that just lurk and don't even say anything. And so I started doing that and that actually helped me a lot with like my growth and stuff and just getting more comfortable. And, um, I also think it's just, it's really difficult if you pay too much attention to that and too much attention to how many people are actually talking in your chat and interacting in your chat. Um, another thing is, you know, it's easy to get really discouraged when either you start a new game and your numbers drop or you are sick for a few days or you have, you know, something going on in your life where you have to take a small hiatus, 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 however you want to say <laughs> it, you know, uh, and you discover when you come back, a lot of people are missing and you may never see them again. 
but no matter what, I mean, that's just how streaming goes. Like you're going to have a lot of people come into your stream. You're going to have a lot of people stay. You're going to have a lot of people leave. Some people that you thought would stay forever eventually leave. Like you just have to be aware that you're always going to be turning over new people. Uh, and we've, we've talked about that with, with a lot of interviews that we've done um, mm -hmm. where consistency is obviously really big uh, and where people feel like, Hey man, if I take off a week because I'm, I'm going on vacation or because I'm doing this, like there are people that are not coming back or there are people yeah. that are, you know, going to go find somebody else. You know, it's almost like a, it, it's almost like, I, I, it sounds really demeaning when you say it. it's almost like high school, you know, like, oh my God, like they're going to find somebody else. They like more and then they're not going to come back to me. And it's like this whole, like just, but it's, yeah, it's kind of true though. I mean, it really is like some people can then, you know, some people just go about supporting 100% hardcore on one person. And are literally there from you know beginning of stream to end uh and then that leaves you in the dust and you have to hope that your content and your bond with your with your audience uh is strong enough that if you do decide to take time away you know that that can happen but i think one of the biggest uh uh one of the biggest uh examples was and we always talk about this was ninja uh you know he took some time away to do all these things away for you know a week or a few days and all of a sudden you know and obviously he's probably built that back up to a respectable number. But, you know, I just remember reading how many people had left. It was thousands upon thousands of people that had gone and, you know, subbed somewhere else or done whatever they're going to do. And so um, that's obviously on a very, very large scale, and you know, and the barometer. But I think especially for the small to medium level streamers, uh, it, it kind of sucks that your grind is 100% until you really get to a point to where you can afford to take time away. Yeah. And I think another thing that's really difficult within that is recognizing that just because you're live five days a week, six days a week, seven days a week, however often you're live, just because you're consistent in that and you keep doing that doesn't mean that your numbers are going to keep growing. Right. You actually, especially in the early parts of your streaming, you have to put in the effort to become a part of other communities. And it's really easy to see that as like, oh, I'm like stealing that person's viewers or, oh, I'm riding their coattail, like trying to get viewers from spending time with them. But like, no, that's not what you're trying to do. Like if that's what you're trying to do, then right. you need to just quit. The goal there is you're making relationships. You're making lots of relationships with new people. You're making real connections, not fake connections to get somewhere. Right. So if you're making real connections, that's also going to help your growth. And a lot of people have a hard time understanding that if you stream four days a week and you're not growing and you're not putting any effort into making connections and relationships with others, maybe you should cut it back to two days a week and take those other two days to actually work on things that are actually going to assist you in your growth because just streaming isn't always enough. Right. So one thing I may not be the right time to interject this, but I'm curious, mm -hmm. you referring to growth and communities and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What have you done, or what did you do to get to the growth rate? Because you're at over 3,000 followers last time I looked. And, I mean, yeah. you always have a pop in chat. You know, anytime I drop by, it's like, i got to hurry up and throw mine in there in all caps so she'll <laughs> notice it, you know. But um, what what are some of the practices, or how do you how do you be part – how are you part of other communities, you know, other than your own, which your Discord is massive, like mm -hmm. huge. But, you know, you started somewhere. So I'm just curious yeah. as to how you, whether it was through social networking or, or what. Um, the majority of it was through social networking. I started off um, joining. So what happened was I started off, I made some friends uh, with a few other streamers who would do like duos and stuff together. Uh, got close to them. One of their buddies created a Discord group called The Alliance, um, which... When I joined it and when we all joined it, there were about 12 of us. Now there's, last time I checked, I think there was about 5,000 people in that Discord. Damn. And it's been oh, about God. a year. So it was hmm. created as a server to like help each other grow and like leave lurks for each other and like, you know, get each other's names out in each other's streams and just really help promote each other and ourselves at the same time to help our growth. Well, then through that, I met, um, my friend Dan Jakes, which Kale, you know, Dan, um, you've seen Dan. So I met Dan Jakes and we were relatively the same level of like streamer. And so we got to talking a lot and started, you know, 
planning things that would help both of our communities um, kind of become one and like feed off each other, bounce off each other, having for the most part, pretty different streaming schedules. And that kind of gave our community somewhere to go, no matter what type of day, what time of day it was. Um, and then beyond that, just becoming uh, friends with people that I met at TwitchCon last year. Um, because uh, TwitchCon was two or three months after I started streaming. So that gave me a really good opportunity to reach out and do some more socializing and meet some new people. And I ended up meeting someone on accident who I've actually become really good friends with um, and gotten to know a lot of their community as well, who I often see in my stream now as a result of a completely accidental meeting. Uh, we were both in the bathroom washing our hands <laughs> at a bar and she had teal hair. I had purple hair and I was like, I love your hair. And she was like, I love your hair. <laughs> and so we were talking about what kind of hair product we use and what kind of dye. And then we were walking over and we were walking past her table. She's like, oh, well, this is my table. I was like, oh, okay, well, here's my card. Like I have one of my cards. She's like, oh yeah, here's mine. Well, it turned out that she was a partner Twitch streamer and I didn't even know. Oh, that's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. So that's um, Enrage Gaming. Uh, her and her husband uh, stream individually on the channel. They'll stream together on the channel. That's pretty cool. They're yeah. super sweet, super nice people. And I've just gotten to know them really well over this accidental drunken meeting <laughs> in a bathroom. Hey, you know, like that's where all love stories start, right? Like in a, in yeah. a, in a bar bathroom. Drunk in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. You know, like that's how most of these things start. Mm -hmm. Um, so I find it interesting cause you bring that up like a uh, husband and wife, like combination, that kind of thing. And then yeah. obviously you're married and your husband's in the air force. Uh, and I'm, and I'm married and my wife is a teacher. I don't know if that really computes or whatever it is. Um, but so have you found that streaming affects your relationship? Because I know I, I should probably say this. So I know that with mine in the very beginning, especially it was just a very weird thing. It's like, okay, like random people are watching you, this kind of thing. And it was kind of a, it's obviously a very it's a strange pitch, right? Like to tell someone that doesn't do it because for one, yes. it seems, uh, what's the best word to use here? Yeah. It just like, <laughs> so people watch you play video games and then like mm -hmm. they want to pay you or they want to do this and that and like donate and stuff like that. Um, but obviously I've, you know, and I, like, hopefully I'm not like overstepping. I feel like as a female, I, that's gotta be even harder because of the sub you know because you're being you know subjected and uh you become like the center of the you know it, it's it's a lot of guys that are in on twitch obviously more i would say it's probably like 10 to 1 male to female ratio most of the time whenever you're looking at it it's pretty heavy on the guys so have i mean have you found that that is ever like did streaming ever impact your relationship i mean you don't have to go like super detailed into um, that but <clears throat> It did at one point, but not in the way you're probably thinking. Right. So when I started streaming, um, as far as like the being like subjectified and being around a lot of, you know, testosterone, some guys coming in and saying weird <laughs> crap and all of that, that was something um, that my husband was already very used to because right. I was already a cosplayer Right. before I started that. So I had an Instagram devoted to my cosplay that I was uh, not hardcore working on growing or anything, but it was something that like I did on the side that was like a hobby that I really enjoyed, wished I had more time to put into it, but didn't. Um, and he was always really supportive of that. He just thought it was cool that I had something that I just really enjoyed. Right. Um, so this for the streaming, you know, he was like, whatever, I trust you. I'm really not worried about it. And I was like, as you should, <laughs> right? And uh so the the thing the only thing that we actually did struggle with was um when we were before we moved we were living in a different town we were living in a college town um because of our class schedules um he had a job where he worked nights and had morning classes and so when I started streaming I had morning classes and I streamed at night well then he got a new job where he worked in the evening and by the time he got home that was when I was starting streaming. And so we literally just, we were like passing ships. Like we never saw each other, never got to talk to each other. And at one point it did like cause him some frustration because he was like, okay, like I know like you're trying to make this your job and I get that, but you also have the ability to like change your hours. And I was like, I know, but I'm worried about like, you know, what if I change the hours and no one shows up and I'm like <laughs> just now starting to like gain some growth. This was like three months into streaming. So right. I just, you know, I had gotten partnered Partner. I got become an affiliate um, about five weeks after I started. Like I got 
affiliate really fast. And so everything was growing really steadily. And I was like, I'm scared if I do this. And so that caused like a little bit of like tension, but it only lasted like a week or two. And then after that, it never was a problem again. So, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, when, as soon as you said that, I was like, that's the first thing that popped my mind. Cause that was the first thing for me, like the way my job works and the way hers is, is most of my stuff is in the morning. And so it was hers, but then, you know, it was balancing time, spending time together. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm pretty sure you could probably attest the same thing is that when you're first starting, it's like a, it's like an addiction. Like you are literally just like as much as I can get it anytime that I can get, like, I want to make sure that I'm doing it and because it's fun. I mean, in wholehearted honesty, like it's a lot of fun. And well, and not only is it fun, it's just, there's so, especially at the beginning, there's so much other work that you need to put into it. There's so many hours outside of streaming, making panels, making overlays, making, finding emote artists for whenever you do get the affiliate. Like there's hours and hours. I mean, when I first started streaming, um, I had about three hours every day where I was between classes and I was home by myself and I would take those three hours and I would just grind getting things set up so that my stream looked and sounded as good as it could. Right. And so there's just so much at the beginning. (laughs) Yeah. And you don't want to stop. You want to like keep getting it and keep making it better. And like you get too focused on that and kind of sometimes forget about content. Yeah. IRL kind of goes in the back burner a little bit. Like, you know, just like, and it's kind of crazy because I think most of the streamers that we've talked to have been that way. Like, uh, you get started and all of a sudden it just kind of takes over and uh, we talked to our buddy Finn and it was kind of the same thing. Like he's got a little girl and his uh, his girlfriend and stuff, they all live together. And he was like, I had to find time to dedicate to just like spending time with my family. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah. that's super important. And that's, I think that's one of the hardest things about being a streamer is that people don't understand one, what you're talking about is all the work that goes into pre-stream, post-stream, in between, you know, everything else you're doing. And then, you're still a real person. So like you still have yeah. things outside of the streaming world that you have to do. And you're not just the person that sits, you know, on Twitch playing video games. Like there's so many other things to do. Yeah. And even, even like just spending time with other people aside, um, like for me, at least, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm a streamer and yeah, I'm a wife and I need to spend time with my husband, but also I am a wife. I need to cook dinner and I need to do some cleaning and I need to do some laundry because the fact (laughs) of it is while summer's going on, I have no classes. All I have is the stream. Right. Meanwhile, he's working overtime every week. He has all of his air force stuff. Like he's constantly busy. He takes summer classes. He doesn't have any free time. And if he does, then I try to make it as like relaxing as possible. (laughs) So it's like, I feel bad if there's like a day where like, I come out of my stream and he's cleaned the kitchen or he's done a load of laundry or something. Cause he's, you know, he's a doll and he does all of that all the time without me asking. And I'm like, you should just sit down. <laughs> like, so it's like finding time to just balance everything. Right. Is, especially outside of the beginning when like a new game that you're really into comes out. Like right now for me, hunt showdown, I am addicted. <laughs> I'm sitting on the couch the other day watching TV with the mister and we're watching tv and it's a great show we're watching this canadian show called letter kenny it's super funny we're sitting there and all of a sudden in the back of my head was like man i could really go for a round of hunt showdown right now kind of crazy several several months ago um evan brought that up uh to to our buddy spencer i was like hey man look at this game really need to get it and we're all just like "Eh, you'll you'll be tired of it soon (laughs) And then um, you started playing a couple weeks ago um, when you started streaming it, I believe. Yes. First time About I saw it. Week and a half ago. Week and a half, yeah. Week and I was looking at it and I was like, this looks awesome. So the first thing I said to him <laughs> when I got here today is I was like, dude, have you seen Hunt Showdown? He was like, you didn't mean the game I told you about four months yeah. ago. Actually, it was like, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> I've told yeah. you guys about this like weeks ago. Like, you guys came up for my birthday in June, and I was like, oh, check this game out. It looks really cool. And everybody's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, fuck me, right? Like, cool. So, yeah. Thanks, guys. Appreciate yep. it. <laughs> all it does is take take a, a streamer to tell you guys that, oh, this looks cool. And then all of a sudden, it's the greatest <laughs> thing ever. So, fuck me, right? So, so kind of leading <laughs> on from there, um, as far as streaming, what is it that, how do you keep motivated to do what you do? 
as often as you do? Um, I think any streamer who really loves what they're doing will tell you the same stream. And what keeps them motivated is the people who spend time with them in the chat. Um, while the gaming is fun, there's a lot of stress involved, especially when, you know, anyone in the world could be watching. You just never know. Um, and then, you know, if you have a bad day, you're, you know, you're putting on face and you're trying to be entertaining and be all of these things, even if you don't necessarily feel like those things, like we all have those days. And for me, it's just a matter of like reminding myself, like, no, I have, I have regulars who come to my chat and they tell me, you know, on a regular basis, I hear, man, I just had the worst day. And then I come here and I see you smiling and having a time and it just makes my day better. Right. And that like makes my heart like so happy. And so I'm like, okay, I can keep doing this because they're <laughs> happy and I'm happy and I can, I can do this. So. Makes sense. Like, I think it is, it's, uh, it's so community and, and, uh, viewer driven and that can make such a difference because there you're right there are days i think the last actually the last stream i had i was like this has just been awful like it's it, there there are those, those streams where you're like man that really fucking sucked like that was that was like because you're not feeling it and a lot of times it's like if gameplay is not there or if you're tired like you know if there's something that's just Absolutely. going on like you know you really have those bad ones so um yeah i mean it's kind of the the adverse effect too like i mean you have the really good ones that make you feel like on top of the world and you have those other ones you're like oh god i fucking suck maybe i should maybe i shouldn't do this anymore like this is just terrible <laughs> yeah. you know so um so we have one last question for you before we let you go so uh we uh we did a product review uh for rogue energy uh because oh. because this guy knew that you were sponsored and so he used your promo code and so on and so forth uh which we're gonna let you we're gonna let you plug that so um tell us a little bit about your your sponsorship with them and then obviously your experience with rogue okay yeah so um i'm a part of an up and esports team called team snapback um it's a very new esports team uh it started around the time twitchcon last year uh so there's been like a lot of development in that and some stuff that's soon to be announced um with that but what happened was uh, our manager was like, hey, guys, I'm working on getting sponsorships, this, that, and the other. And we were like, cool, man, that's awesome. So eventually he comes to us, like, right before TwitchCon. He's like, hey, guys, we're sponsored by this brand new energy drink called Rogue Energy. And I was <laughs> like, if this has antifreeze in it, I'm not drinking it. <laughs> I'm not. No. Like, the ingredients that are, like, that is antifreeze is in like G fuel and like pretty much every energy drink. <laughs> and I was like, I don't really drink energy drinks. I was like, if I don't feel like I should support it, do I have to? He was like, <laughs> I mean, no, I guess. Right. So right before the trip, uh, actually on the drive to California, I looked into it and I was like, wait a minute. This is like, the most natural energy drink I have ever seen. And I'm very um, into the more like healthy, organic, like that kind of stuff. Right. And I was like, this is great. I was like, well, now the question is, does it taste good and does it work? Because like, even like G Fuel, like a lot of people drink G Fuel, a lot of people like G Fuel. I kind of think it tastes like chalk. <laughs> like it has that consistency and I right. don't like that. And aside from the other things that are in it, I was like, Ugh. so we're at TwitchCon. They have a booth set up and the guys who created the company were running the booth, which that alone says a lot about them, that they're actually there to talk to people and explain things to people instead of having like a rep stand in. Right. And I was like, Hey guys, like, Hey, we're part of team snapback, like expecting them to have idea who we are because we literally just got sponsored by them and we're at the time we were nobody and he <laughs> was like oh my gosh yeah i just talked to your manager we did a video conference three days ago da 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 da, da. and i was like oh cool <laughs> right Sweet. and the guy was so nice like um you know i tried their products i was like wow this actually tastes amazing like it doesn't taste like super artificial and it doesn't taste like chalky even though it's a powder i was like this is really good and then 
um, I bought one of their shaker cups and my best friend was with me at TwitchCon and she was like, oh man, I really want a shaker cup, but I just can't afford it right now. And he was like, I don't worry about it. You're with Snapback. Like, here's one, like have it. I was like, man, you guys are cool dudes. Like, <laughs> sweet. So like, I got a picture with them and stuff and I was like, yeah, these guys are sweet. And they were like, yeah. And so now that you have your shaker cup, like you can come by anytime and we'll fill it up for you for the whole weekend. We were like, nice. sweet. <laughs> so we like left chugged it and we were wired we were like oh my god i feel like i could take on the world i feel like i could do a jigsaw puzzle like three seconds <laughs> like and it's it's specifically formulated to not only give you energy but to help with like your cognitive function so it's formulated for gamers so that they can focus better um and have the energy that they need and we were like this is the best thing ever and so we went back so many times and the great thing was even though we went back so many times and we drank so much of it, there was never at any point in time a crash where you just like zonked out. It just like slowly, like you went back to like normal, which was definitely a bonus. Because if you're streaming, you're in the middle of a game, it's intense, <laughs> and suddenly you crash. Well, there went all your momentum for the stream. <laughs> right. So they were just super nice people. The product is really good, it's really well made. They have lots of new flavors now that are all really good. Like, they're just cool people. And whenever I order my orders, I always mention like, hey, this is Cricky with Snapback. And they're like, oh, sweet. And they'll send me, you know, um, product to give away during my streams and stuff, which is That's awesome. That's what's up. Nice. Nice. So, oh. so what's, your, yeah. what's your favorite flavor? The berry pomegranate. It's so good. Whenever <laughs> I first had it, the berry pomegranate and the lemonade were out. Um, and I just really, I don't know. I just really like the berry pond granite. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell me, tell me about how you don't like it. I dare you. Like, like, that. <laughs> like, that's the reason I asked you because like on your stream the other day, I had mango pineapple. No, that's that what, what I had. Well, that that's, that's the flavor refreshing. I had, but I had mango pineapple and I had berry pomegranate. And I was like, mm -hmm. Which which one do I want to drink? And do so you I was like, like pomegranate? No. <laughs> well, no fucking wonder. I didn't know that part of the story. <laughs> son, yeah, of a, I... son of a bitch. I know things. But the pink lemonade was <laughs> decent. I can't lie. Mango the mango pineapple was really good. I tried that. Yeah, um, I really like the mango pineapple whenever I'm like streaming. I don't like it because I drink Rogue Energy sometimes before I go do my CrossFit workouts and stuff. And I don't like it as much before I work out because it's like, it's so refreshing. It's hard to chug. Right. You know, and before you work out, you're like, I'm going to chug this energy drink or this protein or whatever. And... <laughs> right. <laughs> so I like it for streams, but not for working out. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Well, that's awesome. So uh, we're actually going to have a product review at the beginning of the podcast. So whenever you go back to listen to your interview, you'll be able to see what, what Kale actually thinks of Barry Pomegranate. Uh, nothing good <laughs> nothing good but it's so, okay so you know uh, the important thing now which is that, that he doesn't it, like pomegranate. he doesn't even like pomegranate <laughs> so that is a for very specific piece you probably need to know when you listen to this so yeah. um give so once again i shouldn't say once again but thank you so much for hanging out like it's been it's been super fun and i think it's been uh it's been awesome to have you as our first female streamer on here yeah, I really enjoyed it. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, so, so give us so take a few seconds or a minute or so and plug yourself. Uh, tell people where they can find you. Tell people you know whatever you got going on social media or whatever it is. Just tell people where they can find Cricky. All right, yeah, uh, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Cricky. It's like cricket but with a Y instead of a T. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at crickety underscore cosplay. So cricket with a Y keep the tea right uh, and then you can find me on twitter um at cricky underscore so awesome yeah awesome. cricky wasn't available <laughs> oh okay i was like yeah like that's three different handles really so sad. so if you're listening to this rewind go ahead and grab your pen and paper or no well, eventually they'll all be so it's like crick and then cricky underscore and then crickety underscore cosplay yeah, so we have it, to keep the cosplay in it because it's a cosplay yeah. account. Makes well, sense. We'll get there. It just just takes time. Well, yeah, and I used to have Cricky as a separate Instagram. Like I had a Twitch Instagram, and then I had a cosplay Instagram. But then I merged them. Makes sense. Why not? And all my all my cosplay people 
would be confused if I took out the word cosplay. They'd be like, where'd she go? <laughs> so, Done got gone. Yeah, I had people message me. They were like, it's it's different now because I changed the first part. And they were like, I almost couldn't find you again. And I freaked <laughs> out. I was like, my bad. <laughs> awesome. So. Well, well, Cricky, we appreciate you coming on. I know Ben and I have been looking forward to this so, so much here lately. I think it um, think it'd be a good good uh episode for all the viewers and stuff like that so i just want to say you know not even from bro seriously from them too but this is from me yeah fuck us right yeah, fuck y'all <laughs> whatever we don't but, we don't we don't want to thank you oh well we're getting to that next but i just want to say individually thanks for coming on this is a kind of a debut thing in the podcast for me and it was it was really cool getting to interview you as a my first time on the video podcast so yeah. thanks and Thanks then for also, inviting me. I was really excited when I was hit me up. I was like, yeah, let's I, do this. I, I was getting nervous because you took like four days to respond. <laughs> Left me on red. Did I really? Oh my god, I'm the worst. Yeah, he was like, oh, he was like calling me. He's like, you, can, I will, you won't believe it. She's being such a dick. She won't hit me back. I'm just kidding. He didn't say that at all. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> he didn't what? say that at all. <laughs> <laughs> he almost punched me. Like, I could feel it. <laughs> so, I mean, ain't got no soft hands. No, no soft hands in here. But um, <laughs> then again, from bro, seriously, Absolutely. thank you again for coming on. Um, we would love to actually, you know, if you want to hang out and talk with everybody in the community, feel free to stick around in Discord and stuff like that. You know, I know Ben's fangirled over you pretty hard. Uh, waiting on his mic to light up. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, thank you again for coming to the podcast. Thank you for the interview. And uh, we'll catch you later. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. Thank you. All right, guys. So welcome back. Uh, so that was our interview with Cricky. Uh, super, super fun interview. Uh, had a really good time uh, just being able to chat. Uh, the first female streamer to enter the uh, Bro Seriously podcast domain. Domain. So yeah. So either way. So it was super, super fun. Uh, thank you, Kel, for helping bring her on and and. Oh, yeah. Uh, turning her onto the podcast and you know getting us you know somebody that was definitely different from what we've been doing so that was it was awesome oh yeah super enjoyable yeah absolutely so uh that's it for this week guys so uh as always thank you so much for hanging out with us kale thank you for stepping in for dustin while he's been out of town uh it's been a lot of fun man yeah thanks for having me that was uh not at all what I was expecting, but <laughs> yeah. So um, you know, it's like when you see how sausage is made, then it looks like eating sausage. Either way, so thank you guys for hanging out. We really do appreciate you guys, uh, the listens, the follows, you guys spreading this thing like wildfire and word of mouth. Uh, it's been uh, just super, super fun the past few weeks to be doing these. So as always, you can find us at thebroseriously.com dot com, where you can find vlogs, blogs. Uh, all of our social media handles and everything in between. Uh, once again, my name is Evan, and you can find me at the Sir Crunchy on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, all those crazy things. Uh, Kale, where can they find you? All right, y'all can find me on Twitch at Calibrin93. That is C A L E B R I N nine three. You can find me on Twitter at Kale. I don't do anything else social media wise, but those are two places you can find me or anywhere at Bro Seriously. Sweet. So. Uh, and then, of course, make sure you give Cricky a follow or, you know, make sure you go check her out on stream. Uh, as always, thanks you, thank you once again, guys, for hanging out. And we will see you next week. And Dustin should be back next week to, uh, yeah. to pick back up the mantle. So, but Kelly, you did an awesome job, man. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So, thank you, guys. And we'll see you next week. Yeah. I do it because that's <laughs> <laughs>